friends in this video we are going to see some of the properties of roc of the z transform so the first property the roc consists of a ring in the z plane centered about the origin that means any function x of z is nothing but a z transform of x of n we will get one function x of z and the values of z for which the x of z is a finite which is called as a roc is consist of a circular lines or you can say a circles or center is origin always so uh, roc consist of lines like this most importantly it is centered about the origin so a ring centered about the origin is nothing but a region of convergence for z transform which is nothing but those values of z for which the x of z is finite let's go to the next property property number 2 the roc does not contain any pole which is quite obvious but to illustrate this we will take a simple example x of z as z square upon z minus 1 z minus 2 it is a z transform of any random function x of n but in the end we got this function x of z and we need to find out those values of z for which this particular x of z exists finitely so as we discuss in the property number 1 it will consist of a circular lines or you can say circle centered about the origin except two values rather three values so x of z is finite except z equal to infinity because if i have a z equal to infinity this tends to infinity z minus 1 equal to 0 because zero in the denominator will give you infinite answer so z minus 1 should not be equal to 0 rather i can say x of z is finite except z equal to 1 and z minus 2 if i have this also equal to 0 so once again x of z will be infinite if i have z equal to 2 so if you see carefully z equal to 1 and z equal to 2 are nothing but location of the poles of x of z hence this example is illustrates that the region of convergence does not contain any pole beside the location of poles everywhere x of z exists finite third property if x of n is a right sided signal then the roc is the region in the z plane outside the outermost pole that is it is outside the circle of radius equal to the largest magnitude of the pole of x of z so once again let's consider example x of z as z square upon z plus 1 z plus 2 and you have to get a inverse z transform this so that we get x of n so thing is that just by looking at x of z and pole zero location of this we can predict what type of signal this will be either a left sided or a right sided so what the property is saying suppose we plot this 
pole and zero with a region of convergence. Here there are two circles we will get one with a radius equal to one. And another radius equal to 2. So, this is a circle with the mod z equal to 1, and this is a circle with mod z equal to 2. Now, based on the location of poles and zeros, and what type of signal we want, rather, here we are seeing a right sided signal, how to identify if the ROC is outside the outermost pole so outermost pole over here so this is z equal to 2 so outside pole is z equal to 2 so we can have the roc outside the outermost pole so this will be the roc it should consist of a circular lines but to show properly it is outside the z plus 2 equal to 0 that is mod z equal to 2 we are having this particular region which we say outside the outermost circle so if this kind of roc is there then definitely the signal will be right sided so even if there is one circle present but the radius of that circle is less than this Hence, the ROC will be outside the outermost circle, the signal will be right sided or we can say the signal is a causal signal. Means, in the X of N, we have, will have the term U of N. So, to determine whether it is a right sided, left sided signal or a both sided signal, this particular property is very important. So, once again, a right sided signal the ROC is outside the outermost pole. Let's check for left sided signal. Property number 4. It says if X of N is a left sided signal, then the ROC the region in the z plane which is inside innermost pole in other words that is Inside the circle of radius equal to the smallest magnitude of x of z. So, once again, same example x of z if it is z square upon z plus 1, z plus 2. So, if we plot a pole 0 with ROC, we will have two circles. This is corresponding to mod z equal to 1. This is corresponding to mod z equal to x of n will have the same value if we take a inverse z transform but the roc is the key feature which will tell what kind of a signal we will get now we want a left sided signal so roc will be inside the innermost pole innermost pole is corresponding to mod z equal to 1 so we will get roc like this Why? Because it is a left sided signal. So, we can say 
for a left sided signal the ROC is inside the innermost pole and the left sided signal is also called as non causal signal how to distinguish a left sided and right sided signal non causal or left sided signal will have u of minus n minus 1 in its expression then we can say it's a left sided signal so for a left sided signal the roc is inside the innermost pole let's go to property number 5 if x of n is a both sided signal Then the ROC is the annular region, or you can say a, a ring, a ring like region between. Two circles, and I'm assuming over here the two poles are there in X of Z. So example is that X of Z, Z square upon Z plus one, Z plus two, and pole zero plot with ROC something like this. Two circles mod z equal to 2 here mod z equal to 1 to so both sided signal will have a region between these two circles yeah. so for a both sided signal you will get a ROC between two circles so I can write here if you could see this type of a ROC then you can directly say it's a both sided signal. And for a both sided signal we will have u of n and u of minus n minus 1 terms present in the expression of x of n. Let's go to the last property of, of ROC. Let's go to the last property. What if the signal is a finite? So if x of n is of finite duration, then the ROC is entire z plane except possibly z equal to 0 and or z equal to infinite simple example we will take suppose x of n is uh, with a sequence 1, 2, minus 1, 3, 4, like this, a finite duration. And let's consider the origin over here. So it's quite obvious that n is 0, here n is 1, n is 2, n is minus 1, n is minus 2. So why it is a finite? Because it has a definite start and definite end. Then x of z. As for the definition, it will be summation n from minus infinity to infinity x of n z raised to minus n. And if I solve this, we get 1 into z square plus 2 into z minus 1 into z raised to 0 plus 3 into z raised to minus 1 plus 4 into z raised to minus 2. 
So then I will get x of z as z square plus 2z minus 1 plus 3 by z plus 4 by z square. Now this x of z will have the finite value except two values of z and those values are z equal to infinity and z equal to 0. Because if I have z equal to infinity, these two terms will become infinite. And if I have z equal to 0, these two terms will become infinite. So any value of z will do or will make this finite except z equal to infinity and z equal to 0. That is the meaning of this property. For finite duration, it is an entire z plane. Any value of z except z equal to 0 and or z equal to infinity. So here we have seen properties of ROC of z transform.